We just finished installing the Horsepower Freak Stage 2 turbo system in this car. And uh, we're going to do some dyna pulls with it. And before I did that, I want to talk to John, our service manager, about how the Horsepower Freaks AEM engine management system works. So John, I get a lot of questions of people saying, is it a standalone or is it a piggyback? It's, uh, it depends on your definition of standalone and piggyback. Our definition of standalone is a system that completely controls the engine on its own, um, which is what it does. However, we retain the factory DME, which is down there, as you can see, right there. We retain that because it still controls the throttle bodies and the idle air control motor. We didn't want to. We didn't want to pull any of that out of there because we want to retain the ability for the customer to return their car back to stock. So we don't hack up any wiring or anything like that. Um, what you'll notice is uh, this harness right here. This controls the coils. You'll notice that it is no longer plugged into the DME at the bottom. This is our. Uh, I wouldn't know what to call it, but uh, our intercept box, so to speak, it intercepts all the signals and does what we want with it. So it looks okay. like these are coming from the engine management system over there. That's those plugins that we're seeing. Those wires come in here into the, the black box, correct? Yeah, the, the wires from the engine management system actually come in right here. And for example, like our injectors, to control the injectors, the wiring just comes in through the EMS, through this harness, it loops out of this box into the engine harness right here to the engine. It has nothing to do with the DME at all. Okay. So the our engine management system is controlling the spark plugs and the fuel injectors. And has no the factory DME has no control over any of that. Is no, that correct? None okay. at all. If you uh, if you per se were to hook up the PP tool to one of our cars and try to do some testing with injectors and things like that, none of it would work. None of it works. Okay. And then uh, I also get questions about the O2 sensors. We, the have factory to ones. we have to retain the O2 sensors because without them, if we were to unplug an O2 sensor, um, the DME goes into what some would call safe mode. And since the DME controls the throttle, it gives us zero throttle. That's why we retain the O2 sensors. Now there is a way to get rid of that, but that would require flashing the DME and things like that. Stuff that we don't want to do because we want to retain the stockness of the car. Right, and I notice when I drive these that they just drive like they're stock. Is that partly because the factory computer is controlling the idle air and the, uh, the drive-by wire? Yeah, that's part of it. The factory systems still control SMG in SMG cars. They control the throttles and they control the idle air control mode. Okay, so um, also does that, uh, I would assume that that would allow the factory stability control to still yes, work. Yes, all the systems in the car still work. Okay, so now the uh, service engine soon light comes on uh, in these cars. Now, is that because the, the factory DME doesn't see what the engine is doing? or? Or does it see what the it, engine's it, doing? It does see what the engine's doing to a certain extent. It, it throws the uh, service engine soon light because all of the parameters are out of range. Like for instance, your Vanos degree, there's a certain range that that has to fall in. If you go so many degrees retarded or so many degrees advanced past what it's supposed to be, it'll throw a light telling you that there's something wrong. And since the car went from a naturally aspirated engine to a turbocharged engine, the way that the cams are degreed, depending on RPM, are all different. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Can you show me the engine management, uh, the tuning part that you guys uh, use? This is the AEM engine management software. Um, Anybody can download this software from AEM.com, but uh, don't get the idea that you can control our cars with it because you can't. Um, but yeah, why, why is that? We have propri proprietary software that allows us and only us to connect to these computers. Okay. But anybody can download this software if anybody wants to look to see what it does. It controls absolutely every aspect. Um, 
You'll see right here rev limiters. That's one thing that we can't control, especially the upper rev limiter because uh, the E46 M3 actually shuts the throttle off and that's controlled by the DME. Okay, but we can set our own rev limiters. Yeah, we can do, we can do, I mean, we can do anti-lag, we can do launch control, we can do all of it in here. And okay. using some of those profiles is how our master tuner JP um, has done trash control and okay. some of the cool stuff that we do. Right. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna dyno this. I wanna go through some gears so that we can show everybody the, the power it makes in the different gears. So thanks for showing us that, John. Mm -hmm. Okay, John, why don't we do the third gear full first, now the car's all warmed up. Gear is what we'd expect. Okay, John, you ready to do fourth gear? seeing a drop off here when intake air temps were actually going down and uh, JP figured it out and uh, it's actually due to friction in the differential and friction in the dyno when we're spinning the differential at 180 190 miles an hour uh, it creates a much greater load on the car uh, a horsepower drag as, as well as the dyno itself and so the other thing to consider is that in fifth gear and sixth gear, if you're on the street, uh, you're probably going to see actually an increase in power even over these numbers because when we've been doing our dyno, we're using these three wimpy fans that uh, can't probably are flowing maybe 30 miles an hour of air. And when you have 180, 190, 200 miles an hour of air going across the intercooler, the, the drop in intake air temps is going to be even more significant. So this was an interesting, uh, interesting test. Is there anything else you want to elaborate on, John? Um, no, I think we covered pretty much everything. Okay. Hey, thanks for doing this. No problem.